Hi, my name is Richard Walters. In this demonstration, we're going to cover bass lines and multiple bass lines. These areas will now be covered in this demonstration. In this demonstration, we're going to look at bass lines and set in bass lines within Microsoft Project. So baseline is a means of measuring information within project. You might be measuring a duration, start dates, finish dates. You might be measuring costs. So there's lots of things you can measure. And this is now measured through what's called a baseline. Now there's two tables which are useful to see whether a baseline has been set or not. We're first going to go to the what's called the variance table on the view tab. And if we ever see NA, that means no baseline has been set. So what will happen when I set a baseline very shortly now, the dates in the start and finish columns will populate the baseline start and baseline finish in effect like a copy and paste, because this is what we're agreeing to. We're agreeing to these dates. This is one table where the baseline is going to be implemented shortly. And NA means no baseline. So if I show you another table, cost now at the moment the reason why we got a variance is because this variance would have been zero before any of the resources were allocated because these resources have got costs against them so what's happened here the variance column in effect is a it's like it's almost like your budget it's like a planning budget whereby you can now see the costs from a zero cost starting point where this would have been zero first of all because there wouldn't have been any resources assigned the minute we start assigning resources, we can then see how the cost builds up. And then you can see how you're going against your budget. So when the budget is correct and you think, yeah, that's correct, you can then set the baseline and say, yes, everything's fine. And what will happen, this variance column will, will clear itself and it will, in effect, move itself to the baseline. So what, whatever's in this variance will straight away move the, the baseline the minute the baseline's been set. And then any cost then that's extra will be a variance from that point forward. Okay, let's have a go at looking at setting baselines. So it doesn't matter which table we're in, I'll change it back to entry table. The set a baseline, it's the project tab. Set baseline, drop the arrow, set baseline. And nothing more than just, in effect, now just clicking OK. There's lots more you can do to baselines, but for this example, we're just going to click OK. If I go back and check the tables, I'm going to go back to variance. I can see the dates have been copied across, as I mentioned. And if I go to the cost table, I can now see the baselines now we've got the cost and the variance is now cleared. So what I would do when you've got a baseline set, I would turn on the baseline graphic, which will go in the chart area of Gantt chart. So Gantt chart format tab, bar styles section of the ribbon. Baseline, arrow, baseline, last saved. So that's a measure where the gray bar will affect your dates. Uh, this is, these are the dates you're agreeing to. Any change, the blue and the gray will split. Well, we will make a change to cost first. So I'm going to put a uh, fixed cost in the first interview. Let's say this wasn't thought of. And I'm going to put in £10,000. This wasn't agreed as an extra cost. And we can now see there's a variance. That's an overspend. So our budget is now in play, the baseline. We've now got an extra thousand, extra ten thousand cost. That's an extra ten thousand that wasn't agreed. So when everything is measured and monitored at the end of the project, people might ask questions of why was that needed or why wasn't it planned for. We're now going to look at how dates can be affected regarding the baseline. So I'm going to go back to the Entry table. And I'm just going to put a constraint against this. So I'm going to put a constraint against the second interview. So I'm just going to delay the second interview by, by a month. Just as an example. So it's due to start on the 22nd of March. So I always tend to find that date first before I go from there. So there's 22nd of March, and I'm just going to go for a couple of weeks. Okay. 
and I'm going to go forward till the end of April in this example. And I'll go for it on the 29th. And I'll just put a little note in. Test notes so we can see that if you want to put a reason in, you can do something like this. I'm going to click OK. And we can now see there's a clear, clear uh, split between the blue and gray bars. So up until ID 11, the first interview, they're all joined together, blue and gray are joined. But due to the constraint, we've now got a split. So in effect, the project now has been delayed from what was agreed. That's why the gray bars are behind the blue bars. And the constraint is very visual then. If you had a note, you could then see the note with it as well. If I went to the variance table now to check what happened with the variances, we can see now there's a 26 day variance. So if someone said, oh, how many, how many days have we delayed? We've now got a, quite a substantial delay and we've got to try and make this back. The variance table gives you this information. So baselines, very, very useful. Uh, great measures of different information like costs, dates, duration. Um, we set them first and then you measure. But this completes the training video on baselines and setting baselines in Microsoft Project. In this training demonstration, we're going to look at multiple baselines within Microsoft Project and sometimes the need to set more than one baseline. So in this particular example I've got on screen, we've got a situation whereby we're trying to manage a training program with different sections like a planning section, operation section, and delivery section. And there's a situation here where there's a note against a constraint where multiple members of staff and contractors are unavailable. So we've had to delay this project by many, many months because of unavailability of members of staff and resources. Now we're at the present out to November, the 4th of November. Now this project was due to start at the end of January. And we can see that with the baseline graphic. It's back here in January. If you wanted the exact date, because I've changed the time scale, we can't see the exact date, but we can through the project tab and project information. So the project was due to start on the 29th of January, but now we've delayed this training program by just about 10 months. So the baseline we've now set is of no use whatsoever because the best we can do now to start this training program project off is the 4th of November. So right now the baseline we have is of no use. So this is where in this kind of example, you might need to set a second baseline. And that's what we're about to do now. So first, first of all, we're going to do, before we set them a second baseline, we're going to change the start date to the date that we can now see is the best date we can start this project on, which is the 4th of November. And then we're going to set a new baseline to agree from that point forward. So I'm going to now go to the, on the project tab, project information. I'm going to adjust the, the date of the, to the date in November, because that's the best we can do right now. It's the fourth. Click OK. And we can now see the blue bars of a line to the fourth. And now I'm going to set a baseline. So set baseline. And I don't want the baseline last saved. I want another baseline. So we're not going to overwrite the baseline we've already got. You should always keep baselines as information and to show you where things might have changed throughout the project or process. So I'm going to a brand new baseline, a second one called baseline one. So this is the way you work multiple baselines. So baseline one, and I'm going to set it now for the 4th of November. Okay, so now the, the old baseline graphic right now is of no use to me because I'm being measured against the new baseline. So I can turn that off and I can use the new baseline setting. So Gantt chart, format tab, baseline. 
and I want baseline 1 to show as the measure now in the Gantt chart. And now we can see the new baseline is under measure from the 4th of November onwards. Now you might say, well, how can I tell what the difference is between the original baseline, which is due in January, and the existing baseline, which is now November? Well, in this particular view, you can't, but there is a view you can. So we can go to task tab, the different views. And there's one called multiple Gantt. Now that's under more views. It's called multiple baselines. There we are, multiple baselines Gantt. Now if I, if I click apply to this to go and see uh, this particular view. Right, I can see the baselines, but the problem I got now is the time scale is not letting me see them easily. So it's always good to be able to adjust the time scale area. So I'll do that now. I'm going to change this to quarters for the middle tier. And I'm going to go for the bottom tier months, so every month and a quarter. That's good enough. Okay, and that's much clearer now. And this will remember the setting when I come in here again next time now. So if I were came back, they should now remember the, the existing setting. So I can now see my two baselines. The blue baseline is my original baseline. The red baseline is my second baseline. So I can now see how the two baselines are. And if anyone asks me questions, I could say whether the blue baseline had to be reset. And the second baseline had to come in due to multiple staff absenteeisms, and I've got a note for that. So this is how you could manage multiple baselines if needed. But this kind of information should only be used if you've got a if there's something that's gone wrong badly with the existing baseline. It can't no longer be measured because of some big big delay or big difference in cost. And then you would set a new baseline, as has been demonstrated, um, with a new measure. But then you can also always compare existing baselines and, and, and multiple baselines you've got using the multiple baseline Gantt. But this completes the training video on multiple baselines. This now completes the demonstration on baselines and multiple baselines. See you in the next video.